On the 24th and 26th February, firstly in New York and then in London, Freshfield sponsored two InfraNews infrastructure investment conferences. These are some of my thoughts. The two attachments to this video provide a summary of the themes emerging at those conferences. Consistent messages were evident at both conferences. Both were obviously dominated by the impact of the global financial crisis, albeit with a slightly different emphasis in certain respects. In both markets, it is clear that the crisis is demonstrating the resilience of the asset class when compared with other asset classes that are more clearly exposed to depressed economies. The key fundamentals for investing in infrastructure assets remain. That said, it has become evident that infrastructure is not immune from the recession. Airport, port and toll road usage have been affected. Even the most conservative of utility assets, UK water companies. In both New York and London, the lack of bank debt was an overriding concern. Banks no longer underwrite or syndicate. Deals are done in clubs. Leverage levels are less aggressive than was the case two or even one year ago. Covenants are tighter. Valuations have been adversely affected by lower levels of debt, though there is still a gap between vendor and purchaser price expectations. Twas ever thus. Both markets are concerned with banks repatriating capital to home jurisdictions and the rise of economic nationalism. In London, in the light of reduced deal flow, there was much talk around the operation and management of assets and the drive for continual improvement in economic performance, taken with the development of governance models that align investor and management interests. There was little mention of the emerging markets. Safe to say that any emerging market deal had to be strong in all respects. This is not the age for pushing the envelope in emerging market deals. There was also discussion around the theme that quality is king in a target-rich environment, a retrenchment to classic infrastructure assets, roads, airports, rail, ports, PPP and PFI. In New York, additional emphasis was laid on the federal stimulus package, but a consensus that this had little direct utility for infrastructure investment. It will provide a small down payment towards a multi-trillion dollar deficit with its emphasis on direct payments to the states for repair and maintenance projects. It was felt that the market was immature and required further evolution. There is a lack of consistency in approach to PPPs between states. People felt that centres of excellence to promote standard documentation, regulations and guidelines should be adopted along the UK and Canadian models. In New York, there was also a feeling that certain Latin American countries would provide infra-investment opportunities. Chile, Brazil, Mexico, Peru and Colombia. In both centres, there was an emphasis on small deals that get done rather than the larger headline-grabbing deals. In both centres, it was clear that investors were concerned about fee levels and the need for transparent governance of infrastructure funds. Wherein lies the future? The fundamentals remain unchanged. The need for public and private infrastructure and the desire of investors, particularly pension funds, to find safe, long-term assets to match their liabilities. In the US in particular, it was felt that the pension funds would continue to allocate significant sums to infrastructure. Currently, allocations are in the single-digit percentages but this is anticipated to rise to between the 10 to 20 percent levels seen in Canada and Australia. In the US, significant opportunities will become available in the energy sector with the administration's policy focus on green energy and transmission systems. In London, delegates agreed with an increased emphasis on energy asset investment and also highlighted the rise in vo the volumes of distressed sales whether because of excessive leverage on particular assets, forced regulatory divestments, corporates seeking to raise liquidity, or governments wanting to raise cash. In both London and New York, delegates felt that more realistic pricing expectations would emerge amongst potential vendors during the second half of 2009, thereby resulting in increased infrastructure M&A activity. We shall see.